Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and thanks for watching this video, Introduction to Counterplans. This is part one out of a four-part series regarding counterplans, detailing the basics of counterplans. This video is part of my Novice Go Fight Win video series, which is a series dedicated to teaching novices how to do policy debate. So, my name is Callie Chappelle, and I'm a debater for the University of Michigan. I debated for Traverse City Central High School, and I'm a second negative first affirmed speaker. Fun fact about me is that process counterplans are my favorite argument ever. So, how do you make the most out of these videos? Well, you should do two things. First, take notes, and second, you should rewatch bits that you need re-explained. Hopefully, we'll have worksheets and or supplemental materials that will go along with the video, so check out the video description to see what I posted. You don't need to memorize everything in these videos, but what we do want you to be is at least familiar with everything in the videos. It's a building process, so as you go through, as you watch the second, third, and fourth video about counterplans, it'll require you to understand the basic concepts covered in this video. And finally, your coach may like things differently, or you may like to debate in a different style or do a different form of debate. That is totally okay. This is just one starting point and not an ending point. All right, so what is a counterplan? So let's imagine that you have a problem. You're really hungry, you wanna eat a Willy's, so you drive there ready for a tasty treat, but it's closed. So what do you do next? Well, you might go to the next store and eat at Moe's. So coming up with an alternative to the original plan, which was Willy's, because it had a disadvantage, it was closed, created a counter plan, which was we should go to Moe's. So a counter plan, or a CP, is a plan advocated by the negative as an alternative to the plan. So why would you use a counter plan? Well, sometimes it's easier and what's more strategic to just agree with the AF if there's a problem with the AF rather than denying that there's a problem at all. So for example, if the AF solves poverty, instead of saying that poverty isn't a problem, it might be easier to think of an alternative way to solve poverty. Right? So what exactly is a counterplan? Well, a counterplan is an alternative action to the plan. So the job of the negative is to refute the AF. But instead of explaining why the AF's a bad idea, like with the disad, the counterplan simply offers a unrelated alternative action. So it's important to notice unrelated. So what does that mean? Well, it depends on the debate, but neg teams can sometimes be really tricky. So there are two different things that are examples of ways that actions that the counterplan could take are unrelated. First could be doing the plan in a different time, like in one year. That's is that unrelated? Or having a different government agency to the plan. Is that considered an unrelated alternative action? Well, these are things that counterplans could take advantage of, and they could say that they're unrelated um, due to either changing the time or changing the action or the government agency. So, how do you win with a counterplan? Well, you have to prove one of two things. First, the counterplan is mutually exclusive with the plan. So this means the counterplan and the plan physically cannot happen at the same time. Um, so for example, like my mom couldn't give me a hug right now while simultaneously standing on the Great Wall of China because I'm in Michigan. So these two actions are considered mutually exclusive. Or you can't simultaneously increase and decrease spending on aquaculture. Those two actions are mutually exclusive. Or you have to prove that there's a disadvantage to doing the counterplan and the plan at the same time. Or the counterplan is not beneficial. Um, and actually, you always have to prove the counterplan is that beneficial. But you can, pr instead of proving that the counterplan can just physically cannot be done with the plan, you can prove that doing them together is a bad idea. So usually, what we how we do this is proving that the plan links to a DA and the counterplan does not. In other words, you have to prove that doing the counterplan alone, not in conjunction with the AF, is best. Okay, so you have to prove the counterplan is mutually exclusive, and you can do that by either proving that it physically cannot be done at the same time as the plan, or you can prove it by say, by giving reasons why doing the plan and the counterplan together is a bad idea. Okay, and the reason why doing the and then you also have to prove the counterplan is better than the plan, which is the net benefit. Okay, so parts of a counterplan. This is where I'm going to elucidate this a little bit more. So let's just pretend the app is let's go to McDonald's and the advantage is I'm hungry. So this is the same example that I gave at the beginning of the disad lecture about what a disad is. So the counter. So there are three parts. There's the counterplan text, the solvency, and the net benefit are the three parts of a counterplan. So the counterplan text, just like a plan text, is a statement of what the counterplan does. So a counterplan text could be Ben and Dante should get me some pizza. Those were two novices that I taught a couple years ago. Um, second part of a counterplan is solvency. So that's a piece or more of evidence that explains how doing this action will solve all or part of the F. So solvency is if Ben and Dante go get me some pizza, then I won't be hungry. Right? So that solves the advantage to going to McDonald's that I'm hungry. However, instead of going to McDonald's, what I'm going to have um, Ben and Dante do as an alternative action is 
just have them go get me some pizza. How does it solve the app? Well, if I get pizza, then I won't be hungry. Just like solving the advantage, we're going to McDonald's would also resolve my hunger. And the third part is the net benefit. So it's a reason why the counter plan is better than the plan. So usually this is a dis ad that links to the plan, but not to the counter plan. So for example, the net benefit would be if I go on teaching the rest of the novices, well, Ben and Dante go get me pizza, then I can keep teaching instead of leaving. So that would be a reason why it would be better for me to have someone else go get me food right now and not go get food myself. So pop quiz. What are the two ways to enter the counter plan? What are the three parts of a counter plan? Okay, pause the video, see if you can answer these questions. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you did it. So the two parts to enter the counter plan are, you have to prove that it's mutually exclusive, and you also have to prove the counter plan is net beneficial. The three parts of the counter plan are the counter plan text, solvency, and uh, net benefit. See, here we go, ways to enter the counter plan, mutually exclusive, net beneficial, parts of the counter plan, counter plan text, solvency, net benefit. All right, so how do these counter plans compete? So we've got to prove, we're going to have some examples and, you, and you're going to explain and then I'm going to explain exactly how the counter plans are mutually exclusive with the app or they're competitive. So first is the state's counter plan. So the app is the USFG increases aquaculture and the counter plan is that the 50 states of America, so each state individually, independently will increase aquaculture. Okay, so the DA that functions as a net benefit is the reason why having the 50 states do it is increasing U.S. federal government spending on aquaculture with the AF, the USFG doing it, trades off of spending with NASA, which means that we can't fund programs to deflect asteroids, which means we'll all die if an asteroid hits us. So this is the same trade-off DA that we've been talking about, but now we're going to apply it to how, if we have a counter plan in the round, how the counter plan won't link to the DA, but the AF will. Okay, so how does this compete? Well, there are two different things. First, it has a different actor. Instead of having the US federal government do it, like in the plan, in the counter plan, the NEG says the 50 states should do it instead. And it has a net benefit. So if the 50 states do it, there's no trade off with funding with NASA, which is a federally funded program. So the net benefit is a dis ad. Well, how do I explain a net benefit? Usually a dis ad that links to the plan but doesn't link to the counter plan. Well, it doesn't link to the counter plan because the 50 states aren't the federal government, but it links to the plan because it has a funding trade-off within the federal government, okay? So, this is the litmus test. Can the AF and the counter plan be done at the same time? So, can the AF and the counter plan be done at the same time? Can the USFG and the states do it? Well, hypothetically, yes. The USFG can do uh, can do aquaculture, and then the 50 states would also could also do aquaculture at the same time. But... Two questions. First, would that way be the best way? Should we just do the plan twice, essentially? Does that make sense? And second, does doing both still link to the net benefit? So would there still be a trade-off in federal funding from NASA if the USFG did it and the 50 states did it? Would, well, yes. The answer is yes. There would still be a trade-off of federal funding because the federal government still does it. So what I'm trying to say here is if we do both, known as the permutation, this is a really important term, does that link to the DA, the net benefit, and the answer is yes. If the USFG did it and the 50 states did it, it would still trade off with federal funding because federal, the federal government is still doing the plan. So we can say yes, if the answer is yes to this, we can say the plan and the counter plan are mutually exclusive. So they're not mutually exclusive in the way where they physically can't happen at the same time, but they're mutually exclusive in the way that if you do them both at the same time, it's worse than just doing the counter plan alone. All right, so let's talk about the permutation really quickly. We're gonna call this litmus test to see whether it's um, a good idea to do both the plan and the counter plan together, the permutation or the perm. Um, I'm not talking about the perm that Chutney has in Legally Blonde. It's not a type of curly hairstyle. What it is, is, <clears throat> and I, the, as I said, the litmus test to see whether you can do the plan and the counter plan at the same time. We're gonna talk about the perm soon. We just want you to have an understanding of counter plan competition for right now. The permutation will be detailed more in the introduction to counter plans part two video or actually part three detailing app answers to the counter plan all right so let's do another example so here's a privatization counter plan so the app is the usfg does aquaculture like just like the previous one but the counter plan now is instead of the 50 states it's the private sector should substantially increase aquaculture so the trade-off DA, or the net benefit, is the same trade-off DA. that increasing federal government spending on aquaculture trades off with NASA spending, which means that we can't solve asteroids. Okay, so why is this competitive? Again, it's a different actor. Instead of the federal government doing it, the private sector does it. Okay, so the counter plan is actually different than the plan. 
and it has a net benefit. If the private sector does it, then there's no trade-off with funding with NASA, a federally funded program. Because again, the counterplan doesn't have the federal government fund the plan. It has the private sector fund it. Or with the state's counterplan, it had the states fund it. All right, so let's do our limits test again. Can the AF and the counterplan be done at the same time? If the USFG did aquaculture, the AF, and the private sector did aquaculture simultaneously, which is the counterplan, would there still be a trade-off in federal funding from NASA? And the answer is yes. That is, if we do both the blank, does that link to the DA? So doing both, what is that term? Oops. I don't know why there's the answer doesn't go there. It should be the perm. If we do both, if we do both the AF and the counterplan, known as a permutation, does that link to the GA, aka the net benefit? And let's see. Yes. We can say the plan and the counterplan are what's the term? Mutually exclusive. Exactly. Alright, here's the last example that we're gonna do for right now. The Japan counterplan. So the AF is USFG should increase aquaculture, and the next strat is the following. The counterplan is that Japan should substantially increase aquaculture, and then the net benefit is this Japan DA. So it says, if the U.S. works with Japan to increase aquaculture, it destroys Japan's ability to work together with other Asian countries, which kills their, Japan's ability to cooperate with other Asian countries. Asian cooperation is important to prevent increases in military tension in the area, which may cause a war in East Asia. Okay, so that is the reason why the counterplan is good, right? Because if Japan does it, then it causes increases Asian cooperation, which solves an East Asian war. Okay, so why is this competitive? First, it has a different actor. Instead of, as just like the other counterplans, instead of the U.S. federal government doing it, then Japan does it instead. And it has a net benefit. If Japan does it alone, it allows the countries to it allows the country of Japan to work with other countries in the area, creating an, an Asian coalition. All right, so here's the limits test. This one's a little bit different. Can the AF and the counterplan be done at the same time? So if the USFG did aquaculture and Japan did it, the counterplan together, would there be room for Japan to form an East Asian coalition? That is, if we do both, the perm does that link to the net benefit. So think about it. Pause the video, write down your answer, or say it out loud. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you did it. And the answer is yes. We can say the plan and the counterplan are mutually exclusive. So, oh, I don't know why there's another side here. But the reason why that is, is because, remember, if you go back to the net benefit, if the United States works with Japan to increase aquaculture, it destroys Japan's ability to form an Asian coalition. So the, the dissad itself actually explains why doing both wouldn't work, right? Because the net benefit is Japan working by itself to create this coalition, and it fails if the U.S. works with them. So that's the end here. So this is the end of our very introduction to counterplans video. So I hope you join us for the next four or for the next three parts. The second part is a more detailed explanation of how to extend and read counterplans on the negative. Part three is how to answer counterplans on the affirmative, and then part four is an introduction to conditionality. So please join us. For those videos.